Welcome, Morgan. Thank you. <laughs> um, this is a whole new way of doing business, so uh, hope you uh, are ready for it. <laughs> um, I'm just looking to see, this is the item, the one o'clock delegation, and it's item 9.2 on your agenda. So Morgan, I think we'll just let you uh, take it away. Okay. Molly, your um, video is off. Oh, good one. It's off? Oh, Molly. It says it's on now. Back, Molly. Okay, good. Okay, Morgan, you can uh, um, welcome and you can just start up. Awesome. Um, okay, so um, from last council meeting, uh, there was a bit of discussion around creating some materials for a public education initiative. Um, and after council, I was pulled into a communication governance committee meeting where we discussed uh, how to go about this task. And it was decided that I would be mainly responsible for content creation uh, with the guidance and assistance from the governance committee. Uh, so when I left the meeting, I was trying to figure out, okay, so what are we trying to accomplish? Uh, how are we going to achieve it? And how do I make sure that we're all on the same uh, page and expectations? Mm -hmm. So I made a presentation to help myself out and I'm gonna share that presentation uh, with council. Uh, and then if this is not the direction that council is intending to go, um, we can obviously change course. So I'm just going to share my screen. Can you guys see it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, let's get going. So... This might be a bit overboard, but I figured a presentation would help all of us, including myself, um, figure out what exactly we're aiming to accomplish and how we're going to accomplish it. So this is my presentation on the Public Education Initiative. So uh, the purpose. The purpose of this communication initiative is to assist our ratepayers in knowing and understanding the services the county delivers, why we deliver them, and why we deliver them the way we do. So we already have effective posts and information on items such as road closures and service disruptions. So this new communication initiative will not affect the delivery of these posts. Instead, this initiative is focused solely on the education of county service deliveries, processes, and procedures. According to the IAP2, which is the International Association for Public Participation Spectrum, I believe we're aiming this initiative to be a level one informed tactic. So we're pushing information to our ratepayers. However, we will of course direct communication towards comments and concerns we're receiving. So for example, if a ratepayer thinks that we should have greater plow hamlets, we will direct a post with information outlining why we have small plow trucks do the hamlets, educating our ratepayers on the value they receive from us delivering the service in the manner that we do. So what is the why? There tends to be a lack of understanding in what municipalities do and why we do what we do. So through this initiative, we will post information educating the public about the activities and services we perform and why we perform them. So the goal of this communication campaign is to inform ratepayers on the value they receive from the services we provide. So through our posts, we'll explain why we do the things we do and why we do them the way we do. So whether it be legislated or mandated, or it's just a more efficient way to operate, we will explain to ratepayers that we have thought about these things and we are operating to provide the best, the best value. Uh, and so what channels can we communicate through? The main source of communication for ratepayers should always be the county's website. We need to use our other platforms and channels of reaching and informing the public to direct them to our website. So we have multiple channels such as Newell Connect, Newell Notify, LinkedIn, etc. But I think for the purpose of these educational posts, we should focus on the above channels. We don't want to try and be everywhere and on every platform and only be partly there. If we focus our efforts here, it will be a manageable task where we can better understand our effectiveness and reach. 
social media is free in a sense and immediate to get our message out. It is important that the information is altered and geared for the audience of the platform that we're communicating on. I think we should be aiming at posting at least two to three times a week for these educational matters on our social media and for our newspaper ads, we need to be a bit more selective. The audience of our newspaper versus social media is different. The newspaper also has time delays in delivering information, so that will also need to be taken into consideration in the determination of posts that go forward to this platform. As we move forward and will be discussed later in this presentation, we will investigate further channels of communication once we have our footing established. So what do we post and what should generate a post? Anytime council or staff receive a request or complaint, whether it be an email, a new notify request, a letter to the editor, etc., this is a great opportunity for us to clear up a simple misunderstanding. Chances are if someone said something, there are at least a handful more of people wondering and thinking the same thing. So let's spin these into an opportunity to communicate. Let's take the feedback we're hearing and make a post explaining what we're doing and why. So department heads are the experts of their service areas. I will be relying on departments to provide me with some basic information about activities, programs, and general information that they wish more people knew. I personally think it's super easy for us to get in our own silos and put the blinders on. When we work in something every day, we're the experts at it. And we tend to just expect everyone to know what we know, or at least half of it, but we actually don't. It's likely we actually know very little about your department about what your department does, and particularly why you do it, and most importantly, why you do it the way you do. So we need to take a step back and view this from a different mindset. I will need the basic of basic information. You might think this is so simple people won't care, but it's probably what they care about the most, or at least will understand and relate to the most. So we need to uncomplicate this, because it's really not complicated. We're promoting ourselves. We're saying, hey guys, we're doing a good job. We work hard, we have smart staff, and we work efficiently. We should be proud and let the public know. Uh, and branding. So as noted in our brand strategic plan, we will utilize Arial type font. In the event that Arial font is not available, the next closest typeface will be used. So for example, Canva does not have Arial. And in this event, we'll, we will use open sauce. And we will utilize the above colors as our main color schemes. These colors can be slightly adjusted for appearance sake, but we'll always aim to use these ones. Uh, and what I need. So what I need from council and the rest of the department heads to make this work. So as Kendra stated in council, if it were not for Corporal Andrews and McDonald being so willing to work with her on the development of content, she wouldn't be much. This is the same thing that we need here. I'm not an expert in every area, and I'll be heavily relying on the department experts to be for providing me with the information we think that the public should know. Again, with emphasis on why we do what we do and why we do it the way we do. At this point in time, I'm gonna say that with guidance from the Communications Governance Committee, uh, generalized topics will be determined for selected time periods. From these topics, I will be tapping the department slash service area experts for information that we should post. Um, once posts are developed, they will be cleared with the service area experts to ensure accuracy and then okayed for distribution by the Communications Governance Committee. And we're going to wrap it up with our game plan uh, moving forward. So expectations. I think it's important that it's known and expected that if we are to have a consistent voice and message, that this will be a time-consuming matter. To have a solid presence, this shouldn't be a side of your desk task. Additionally, I think it would be beneficial that we have clear expectations from council management that the items discussed in this presentation and the examples shown are the direction intended. If this is not the intended direction, we'll just need some clarification moving forward to ensure that we are meeting the expectations on the desires of this initiative. Uh, one of the most important things that we need to expect moving forward is that communications are associated with both positive and negative public response. It should be expected that we will likely receive both types of feedback. However, the importance of open communication, education, and the progress we can make in public perception will outweigh the negatives, even if the negatives tend to come in the form of a louder voice. Additionally, we shouldn't be scared of people asking questions or saying something that's inaccurate. We have nothing to hide, and every question or comment is a great opportunity to clear the air and communicate with our ratepayers. We can handle these situations in many ways, 
either turning off comments or having a generic response to contact the county, or we address comments and concerns. We should address people in a timely fashion, so for example, within two business days. Uh, we can set up a post explaining when people can expect responses to clarify those expectations as well. If an event arose that people were boisterously voicing inaccurate information on our page, we can turn comments off. Uh, and then moving on, so we will work on developing our content calendar more in depth. So let's not get too bogged down in this. Let's develop some general ideas of things that we want to promote in certain times of years, and I will take care of developing the post for those. We just need to work on developing the main themes for the calendar. Uh, and then next up would be the results. Um, so I'm going to come up with a game plan for measuring our results, and we can deliver this to you, Council. I'm thinking I will track analytics on a spreadsheet, such as comments, likes, shares, etc. But I'll need to do some research on analytics and posting schedule time for effectiveness. Um, but this is just listed as something I'll need to further develop. And then post creation. So I'll be working on developing more content in the coming days and weeks. Departments should be expected to be tapped for information. And just on a side note, I'd like to explore videos. So for example, when a service is being delivered, such as plowing, mowing, the opening of Emerson, uh, we should go out and take a video of Mark, Todd, or Will um, explaining what's happening and why. And then uh, next up, we'll eventually look at more avenues of communication. Of course, this will be further down the road once we have a solid footing in what we're already planning to tackle but something that we should give some thought to. So I'd like to investigate the possibility of getting a radio segment similar to Talk of the Town of Barry, where we educate on a certain topic each week, just as another channel to communicate with our ratepayers. So I'm curious if council would one, be interested in this, and if they are interested, uh, would they be interested in being the voice on the show if we did go this route? Um, and then lastly, Communication is fluid and ever-changing. Um, I think it's important to be consistent in our voice and message, but not to be tied down by a plan and a mandate. Um, we need to be flexible enough to be current and interesting. Since this is a new initiative we're working on, I don't want to nail us down right away to a hardened plan. Um, we need to play around with posts to see what generates the most traffic and buzz. Although plans and mandates are important, I think it's crucial that we don't bog ourselves down in the development and update of them at this time. So as long as we have a clear understanding of the purpose of the initiative, what we're trying to accomplish, and the understanding to post professionally, um, we'll be okay. Uh, at this time, I think it's important that we just start with getting our communications going and circle back around to these as time permits. Uh, and then I have some examples. Um, which we can either I can scroll through them fast or you might have gotten the uh, council agenda back up. Uh, and then so this one would just be like kind of a two part post. Um, this one's a newspaper example. Uh, it's probably important to note that the newspaper posts do take a significant more amount of time just because they require so much more information to be put on them while also making them visually appealing. Um, so to finding that balance between the effectiveness, it just takes a little longer than the social media posts. Some of these are currently scheduled to go up uh, in the next couple weeks. I'm going too fast, just yell at me. And then uh, we can just wrap it up with uh, I'd love to like hear your thoughts and if you maybe wanted to come up with anything you wanted pushed right away um, and all of that. Morgan, great, great presentation, great organization and um, yeah, Council's role is pretty clear with uh, the ideas and the critiques and improvements or changes. Other comments from Council? Hubie. Uh, Morgan, I like the idea you had of the uh, getting on the radio. That's a good place to be too because uh, a lot of people listen to the radio and uh, Kendra does it with Safe Communities on Friday. So if you were thinking of getting onto that or with uh, the mayor as well. I think that's a great idea.
Anne-Marie, Lionel, and Kelly. But leaving it in your capable hands, and at the same time being flexible if a topic comes up, if there's something that we think, hey, people need to know that, then we'll, we'll just let you know and, and hopefully you can adjust accordingly. Lionel? Yeah, very nice presentation, Morgan. It's, it's excellent. And just a comment on the, the counselor's roles and re responsibilities. I thought it was quite interesting. The counselor is elected to look after the interests of the entire municipality. Good point. A counselor must be careful not to place the interests of their electoral district above the interests of the whole municipality. Two excellent points that we're dealing with those concerns right now with some of the public. So thank you, Morgan. Good, good job. Does that reference uh, the MGA? It does too, doesn't it? Like it isn't just stuff Morgan's making up. <laughs> It's so really good. I'm pretty good at making stuff up, but <laughs> that one was from the MGA. <laughs> and it's, uh, that one's scheduled to go out um, in two weeks. Uh, Kelly was next, and then Brian? Um, just quickly, Morgan, um, because you told me I had to uh, walk during the whole council meeting. I chose not to do that, but I did walk during your presentation, just so you know. Um, and uh, I, I thought you did, I thought it was a great presentation and I appreciated um, the, the backup information. Of course, I went through the presentation in the package, but uh, your informative um, brought to light a whole lot more information and uh, so it was. It was good. Um, I feel like you're right on, right on the mark. Thank you, Brian. I agree with uh, the previous comments. I think you've come up with so many great ideas, and the way you've rolled it out, I just couldn't be more happy. The only thing I would like to add is that um, a consideration, and you've probably thought of this already, is that. The timeliness of some of these presentations and the, the rollout, depending on the time of year, um, you know, right now we're in a snow cold season. So maybe that maybe that plow truck should, uh, you know, doing the hamlets is a better option than the than the roadside mowing. But, you know, again, it's uh, I'll leave it up to you. I just I looked at this and I'm just in awe. I just think you did such a fantastic job on it. Back to Lionel. Just one other note. Where did you find a fawn with a set of horns like that, Morgan? <laughs> now you see, that is really good feedback, Lionel, because there'd be somebody that would notice that for sure, because <laughs> the critics are always there. So Morgan, further to that, um, probably a good thing for pr your self-protection and for all of us always um, before it hits the newspaper like you've been doing send it out and give us a heads up and people can uh, respond and you know already that I'm an old English teacher so anytime you want something uh, proof to I'm certainly available Just to confirm, um, so for the newspaper post going out, and I believe it's for the next three, three months, um, do you want all of those posts sent to all of council for approval before going to the paper? I wouldn't do it, Morgan, but I don't know what others think. You're going to have feedback from 10 people. Good luck. Good, good question. Um, Morgan, um, I'll take the responsibility of having a look and that way you don't have to send it to all 10 unless somebody else wants to see it. If I have questions, I could always forward it to some other people. That way you're out of the political loop. 
that work? That's good with me. Uh, and then I just had one more question um, regarding the radio. So if we went the route of getting a radio segment, um, one, is council interested in going that route? And then if we did go that route, is council interested in being the voice on that? And that's an interesting question because it has been talked about in the past. John Petrie has tried to get us there and uh, council has never been willing. So what are your thoughts folks now? Wayne, Brian, Hubie. I, I think it, it's probably a good idea, but there's one thing we have to stress that I would not be part of that. I would not be going on the radio, but uh, actually having <laughs> people from the county doing some uh, interviews on the radio and explain what they do. I think that would get way more coverage than our website and, and uh, some of these others, even a newspaper because everybody listens to the radio. So I think that would be a, really would get the message out there. So Wayne, that was to start with staff. Is that what you said? Yeah, or maybe start with you, Molly, as being the reeve, because uh, you are the head of the county, actually. So, and then go to staff. And if we go to the to the new CAO, maybe uh, introduce her on the radio, or her or him. I'm. I don't. I'm <clears throat> sorry. I. Don't take it any way. Whoever that happens to be could be introduced on the radio and it might be a good way to proceed with this. Moving on, uh, Brian. Um, yeah, I, I don't think we can expect to uh, help Morgan out without being part of this um, solution. We've, we've identified that we wanted to do a better job of communicating. She's come up with a plan to include council as part of that with the radio segment. And um, I certainly don't have a face for a television, but I can probably lend my voice whenever it's needed on a very intermittent basis. And uh, I, I agree with sort of with Wayne's comment. I think Molly should be the main spokesman, but I don't think she should be relied on to do them all. And I would be willing to, to help out where, where I can. Thanks, Brian. On to Kelly. My, I, I'm fine with uh, doing what, what I can to support Morgan in this adventure. Um, and uh, just knowing or um, letting folks know that um, usually when you go on the radio, you have talking points ahead and, and you can um, prepare ahead of time. So that makes it easier. I'd be fine with that. Anything else from council? Tracy. Maybe it would be a good idea to go back and forth, you know, like one week or whatever we could have a council member and then the next week or however often, I don't know if it's, if you plan to do it once a week or every second week or, but maybe we could just rotate back and forth between staff and council and then we could all participate. Yeah, I, I've always thought it'd be neat for people to know, uh, you know, when you walk into the office, when things get back to normal, who are the faces you're going to, who are the first people you're going to talk to? You know, the ladies out front and uh, there's just, yeah, there's all sorts of things people can do as well as uh, talking about what we do. It's about who, who we are too. Hubie. Well, I agree with what everybody's been saying. Um, there are ways you can do it too. You can have a uh, interview on a, on a phone and then they just take it in there and play it over again. And I've done it with ads too before. So you don't necessarily have to be in the studio to do it. But uh, no, I agree with everybody. I think it's a great idea and let's all have turns at it. Sounds good. 
Morgan, did you get enough info back at you? Yeah, I am good. You guys are? I think we are. I don't see any other hands up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Clarence. I mean, I, you know, I think all of us are probably a little bit reluctant to get on the radio and be the public voice, but I think we should also give you the license to, license to push us a little bit once in a while and uh, don't let us off too easy. Um, I think you're the professional one in this, uh, one that's leading it, got the better grasp of it coaching us a little bit, helping us along a little bit, but also don't be afraid to push us a little bit. It gives you a little bit of leeway, but uh, I think sometimes we need that little little bit of help and a little push and, and uh, try to get everybody. I think we want to, what I'm trying to say is, I think we want to be very professional about this. And sometimes you need a little bit of time to prepare. So and every one of us is going to need different degrees of preparation. Of, of that. You take Molly, she can do that off the back of her head, but some of the rest of us have a, have to, uh, we need a little coaxing and, you know, say, oh, don't say that. Or I think you need, some of us need that once in a while and uh, don't be afraid to do that. So I think um, talking to both you and our, and my fellow counselors, uh, let's be open. Let's uh, give the uh, Morgan's got a tough job. Let's make sure that we help her, but also let's be be very um, acceptable of any corrections and, and help that we can get from her. So thank you very much. And thanks for taking it on. It's We'll see how it goes. It's it's quite a challenge. So thank, thanks for your work. The good news is there isn't a lot to compare to, Morgan. Lionel. points, Clarence. I, I think we all need to push every once in a while. These are scary prospects to get on the radio, but when you do it, it's 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 amazingly um, easier than you may think. Um, I, I've done it myself a few times, and at first it's very scary, but it, it, it you get settled into it, and it's not that bad. And I think it's very good for uh, I think it's very good for the public to hear from us. I think that's a good, great idea, Morgan. All right. Well, Will from Elemental is on deck, and I guess he's here or with us. So um, thank you, Morgan, and stay in touch. And anything else we can help you with, uh, Feel welcome back at our table at any time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, we'll carry on in the agenda at item 93 Elemental Energy, and that is uh, with Will, our 130 delegation. And I'll just turn it back over to Lane, and he can take it from here. Welcome, Will. Douglas, this is kind of a good news story. Uh, Will had reached out late last week and want to provide an opportunity for him to inform council as to how things are proceeding on their project and also a particularly interesting initiative that Elemental Energy is wanting to put in place in conjunction with their Brooks II solar project proceeding. So I think it probably would be just appropriate to turn some time over to Will and give him an opportunity to provide counsel with an update and background on the um, community fund initiative that they're wanting to put in place. Yeah, thanks for the intro there, Lane, and, and nice to see everyone again, even though it's a little bit different this time. Um, yeah, so I want to give everyone a bit of an update on our Brooks 2 project. It's a project that we've been, it's a large solar project right next to the Brooks Solar Project. Um, and we've been advancing this project over the last few years. 
and through the development process, working through the AUC, working uh, with the county to rezone the lands and, and to get our development permit approval. But ultimately, we've been work working really hard um, on the business end and the financial end of the project to to make the project work um, for all the for us and for every other party. Um, I want to give the update to the council that we have made the investment decision to go forward with this project. Um, uh, and we are planning to start or kind of have the full mobilization of construction happen in April of this year. And the project would be constructed from, from about April through the summer and uh, it'd be operational by the end of the year. Um, so I, I want to share that as, you know, as soon as we, as soon as we felt, you know, comfortable, you know, sharing that um, in a very public, <laughs> very public way um, that we have kind of made that investment decision to move forward with the project. And, and in doing so, we wanted to set up uh, a community benefit fund for the project. Uh, we currently for our Brook Solar project, we do provide, you know, community benefits um, through donations to the Kinsmen as well as other groups, but we do so in a, in a less formal way. Um, we don't have a necessarily an agreement in place to, to do that right right now. We just um, we just have been, but there has been some changes on the regulatory side of things for uh, these types of projects, <clears throat> for power generation projects connected to the local distribution system, which is in this area Fortis's distribution system. There is a, a a law that was passed, a regulation that was passed called the Small Scale Generator Regulation. And by default of a power generator connecting to the Fortis's distribution system, you can you can be approved as a small scale generator, <clears throat> which is great. It offers some benefits. Um, there is if you are a small scale generator, which the Brooks Two project will be, you can also apply to become a community generator. Um, you can only become a community generator if you are if you have a community benefit fund in place. Uh, or if you're a part of a group that would naturally benefit the community, uh, maybe for example, if the if the town had propo is proposing a project, you would likely become a community generator. The benefit to becoming a community generator is that the distribution company Fortis um, will pay for the meter that your that every project needs. That's um, it's a it's a fairly significant cost. It's in the realm of about fifty thousand dollars or so give or take, it depends. Um, but so that's, that it offers uh, some, some financial benefit for developers to establish uh, a community benefit agreement. And even if they may not be inclined to before, um, some companies typically do that. <clears throat> uh, as I said, we, we've been doing that all along with our Brooks Solar project, but uh, it also helps give a nudge uh, to maybe other companies that, that haven't. Um, so yeah, we wanted to, to set up a community benefit agreement um, with the county. So what we've done is we've drafted a MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding, which outlines <clears throat> our commitment to donate $20,000 uh, for 10 years um, to a range of different initiatives, which can be kind of decided by um, the county as well as the town of Brooks. Because um, we feel like that this project is, you know, it's called Brook Solar Two, and um, it's right outside the city of Brooks. Um, you know, it's naturally it's it's pretty present uh, present in the in the city as well. So we want to make sure some of those benefits stay local uh, within the city, um, but also benefit um, the residents of the county that that do li live nearby and, and are generally nearby as well. Um, so I think Lane has done some some work with the folks at the county uh, to kind of figure out how you know how those funds might be best be best managed and from elementals end, and you know we will largely <laughs> leave that up to the county and the town to determine kind of where the funds go and um, but we, we've kind of outlined some some criteria that we'd like to see in terms of just potentially benefiting education potentially benefiting you know a range of different community initiatives um, purposely leaving it very broad um, because we want to allow uh, really anyone that needs funding locally to be supported by uh, by this fund going forward. Thank you, Will. I noticed uh, today in the Latham Solar Project update, there seemed to be a reference to a similar, similar concept. So as you said, it's 
it's part of the whole Fortis uh, way of operating or whatever whatever you said there. So other 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 um, solar generators would be doing the same thing. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're likely going to see more solar projects um, do this. Um, we actually did this for our Innisfil solar project as well, um, which we built last year. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think you will start to see it more. Um, I'm not sure um, of, of the other project that you mentioned, but you'll probably see it more going forward. And again, it's it's very specific to projects connected to Fortis's system. I know there's larger projects proposed within the County of Newell, um, which wouldn't necessarily apply for this uh, because or be allowed to do this because they're connected to the transmission system. Uh, not saying that they, you know still you still encourage them to set up a fund. Um, definitely do that, but um, that's just, they just can apply for this. Thank you. Questions, Brian. So thank you for that presentation, Will. And I was just wondering, in part in your criteria, do you require that the that the city of Brooks be involved in this? I guess the reason I I was um, I was thinking along that lines is because it's a county. Um, it's on county land, and I'm I'm certainly not opposed to them um, applying for for some funds. I'm just a little reluctant to them being part of the deciding committee on how those funds are are delegated or distributed. So I just was curious whether you have criteria within the, your corporate structure that requires us to to involve uh, another municipality that's. Uh, that's proximity is is close to it, or whether it could be uh, allocated by uh, strictly a, uh, a county or a county led uh, yeah. committee. From my perspective, I, I, I there doesn't necessarily it doesn't require us um, to involve the city of Brooks or. Uh, you know, similarly, we, we could just execute a MOU with the city of Brooks and, and not involve the county, but um, we feel like we feel like it would it, it's prudent to. Um, in terms of the administration of the funds, um, I've kind of just asked the, this county of Newell and, and, and maybe Lane can, can speak to this, um, what what they think makes sense um, kind of going forward. Um, so maybe Lane, I'll, I'll let you chime in there. Uh, thank you, Will. Uh, when Will reached out, uh, we had an initial conversation about just what the community benefit program is and how it could work. And uh, I guess my initial thoughts were that really the, because of where the project is located, right on the um, edge of the city, recognizing that it is in the county, there is benefit to the region for that project being placed where it is uh, from an economic development uh, employment perspective and was just thinking that quite possibly something of this nature would be uh, appropriately referred to joint services where there could be some further discussion as to just how the uh, community benefit portion of the project could be managed in the interests of the community at large. I don't think that it is a requirement that it be um, expanded to include the city for sure. But given the the past and the, the working relationship that has been in place, uh, I think it would probably be an appropriate uh, consideration to be given when it comes to setting down the, the rules for the use of the, or the distribution of those funds. And just to respond to that, I, I, I'm not suggesting that the city wouldn't get benefit from it. I just am more suggesting that it be done on application basis where um, they, they would be free to apply for whatever funds they felt that could be used appropriately. It would just be up to the county because it's a county um, infrastructure. It sits on county land. It's accessed by county the roads um, that it, that that was my thinking along those lines. Lane, 
just to clarify, it's not that we anticipate that the city of Brooks is going to be applying for funds. There's a need for an approval committee to be established. And we were thinking it would be appropriate to have representation from the city of Brooks in how those funds would be distributed throughout the community. Uh, we didn't think or hadn't anticipated that the city would actually be applying for funds. The intent is, from what I understand, for those funds to go out to groups and organizations in the community where needs have been identified and it wouldn't necessarily flow to the municipality. Other thoughts, comments? Brian? Clarence? Brian, you're going first. Well, I, you know, I, I'm sort of going to stick to my guns, I guess. And it's not that I'm against anti-city. I just think that, you know, they have businesses that are probably more than willing to help them. And, and, uh, um, and they, they take it, they, they are fully within their rights to take advantage of those generosity and, and, uh, and, and should be commended for that. Um, you know, when, when JBS, uh, provided money for their rec center. I don't remember us being invited to participate in that discussion. And, and that's not, it's not that I'm, that there's bitterness or anything. I just think that um, this is a, a you, you as a elemental have been generous, you know, in offering this. And I do appreciate that. And, and uh, we could look at, we could look at something on an application basis for those funds with elemental and making sure that it's appropriate. But uh, but I I truly believe I would like like it to stick within county, or at least within people that are represented in the county, whether it's uh, uh, members at large or a council makeup, as far as the as, as and and then obviously elemental, as far as the way that this uh, this um, grant or this benefit is being distributed. Will, did you have your hand up before I go to Clarence? Yeah, I'm just kind of figuring out the system here. It's great. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, no. In terms of in terms of the, the funding, all of the funds would be on an application basis, um, with the idea of some of the funding potentially. Uh, and again, we're we're definitely open. We're kind of just starting this conversation right now, and, and kind of setting the framework around how we want to be, you know, how we want to generally move forward. Um, <clears throat> I guess in, in our in elementals point of view, is we want the the benefit that these that the this, the the people receive from this project to be generally close by. And you know, I know there's I know personally I've talked to people a lot a lot of people that live in the county um, that. That would be personally, you know, impacted by um, this project, or even just see the project when they're driving by. And I, you know, I definitely am thinking about those some of those folks when I'm when we when we're presenting this. And similarly, all of the people in the city of Brooks when they drive by the project, I kind of want to have that, you know, just the ability for them um, to also have the chance to to receive funding from this. Uh, I know the county is very large, and there is a there's many. It, other people that, that may live in the county that may never may never even see this project so that was kind of the original uh, some of the thoughts there but um, you know how it's administered and I, I'm, I'm very open to leaving that up to um, to the city uh, and, and the county here so Clarence uh, you know I kind of uh, Kind of interesting. I mean, usually when we have corporate donations, uh, the recipients receive it, and, and that's it. So I guess, and it's really up to the corporate entity to decide where those those dollars go. Uh, so I guess, really, it's their call. Um, so I'm not I'm not sure exactly. I mean, you tried a little bit, well, how to. What your logic or your rationale behind it? So I mean, uh, you know, we, you know, if we had a choice, uh, the county said, you know, we're going to say okay. We work very well with the city of Brooks. Uh, a lot of the benefits 
recreationally go to the people that live in the city and, and that happens all the time. So, and we, we discuss that and we work it out. So I'm sure we could make some kind of, if you wanted us to make those decisions, you could, you, we could certainly work something in jointly with the city. However, if we have a choice, we'd say, well, that'll give it to the county and we'll decide how to do it. And it'll, you know, it'll, it'll go to the city too, but it's in our control. And I, and I see this, this discussion as, as you know what you know how we'd like to do that well it's if it's the county we'd like to have those have control and we'll make the decision within the county uh, but it's your money um, we haven't usually received corporate donations up front as a promise like this i mean it's pretty rare that that's happened it's usually the other way around municipalities or groups uh, will um, lobby for help or somebody some corporate entity feels fairly strongly about a hockey club or uh, something in the arts or wherever it may be uh, that benefit the community and they hand it out. So it's not very often that we see it in, in the plan before the project is even made. I don't think we've ever seen that. So uh, at the end of the day, it's your call. Much as I'd like to have it as our call, but it's your call. And... Uh, so I don't know. I don't know where this goes, but I think we need some more discussion, or we certainly can have some more discussion. But um, I just I think I'd like to point out, point out to council at the end of the day, it is the corporate entity's call on how they want that money distributed. If they like our help, we'll certainly give it to it, give it to them. We would prefer that uh, we were the sole sole uh, body that that decides but i mean that's that's the corporate entity's question it is in the county and, but like line i like uh, brian says we have a, a very large industry that we're all very dependent upon for for things and that you know they make that call all the time where they decide we may lobby as groups but so it, this is a little different i mean it's up front and, but so anyway I'll, I'll stop talking. I just find it kind of interesting, this whole discussion. All right, uh, Wayne had his hand up and Kelly as well. When I first uh, seen this, I, my reaction was very similar to Brian's. And, but when it comes right down to it, this is gonna benefit both communities. I, it, it maybe rankles a little bit, but the truth is this, the members of the community are the ones who are gonna benefit from this. And I thank Elemental very much for this because this will help our communities. And uh, that's the main thing. And how we, how we distribute it, I'm sure that won't be a problem when, in the future. Kelly? Thanks, Will. Um, and thanks, Molly. Thanks, Will. Um, this is quite a different discussion than what we typically have, so um, bear with us. Um, another option for you to consider um, would be the Div Divisional 5 and 10 Recreation Board. Um, and those on that board is council and member um, uh, resident members and they that is their job is to grant funds on an annual basis um, the reason i suggest that is because joint services is made up of um all municipalities so so it's not the county of Hill and the city of Brooks that would be voting on this unless you put some parameters in place but at these meetings um, Rosemary Duchess and Bazano mayors are also there so, um, it it kind of changes the dynamics and and the purpose of joint services I, I to consider that as another option good suggestion Lane Good, 
good discussion on this. I guess the, the main thing that we would be looking for from council today is a motion to approve a memorandum of understanding. The actual details regarding the framework for how those funds would be distributed in the future, that can be worked out during the months ahead. But the main thing that is required at this point is just uh, an agreement that recognizes that we are entering into an arrangement with Elemental that would establish a framework for these funds to be received by the community. And then those details would be worked out in the coming months. Thanks, Lane. Hubie. Well, I'm willing to make that motion. So the motion would be to um, move forward on an MOU with Elemental Energy. And I guess we wouldn't be referring it to anybody at this point in time, just to move ahead and, and get the whole um, memorandum in place or not in, well, the wording and all of that for a community, um, what's it called? Community benefits agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Sound good, Hubie. Ariana, yeah. got it. All right, Anne Marie. In your motion, do you want to mention joint services, or you want to leave that out? I got the feeling from Lane that we didn't need to get that specific yet. Is that accurate, Lane? Correct. There is going to be an opportunity for further discussion as to what appropriate framework should be put in place for the distribution of these funds. The main thing at this point is approving a memorandum of understanding. Okay, so that's all the motion is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Any other questions? All in favor of the motion? Opposed? Motion is carried. So, Will, any other comments? We know that uh, you can keep in touch with Lane and continue your conversation and work and anything else? No, just want to say thank you to the, to the county. Uh, it's been, it's been you know, quite a process kind of going through the development of this project and been working on it for a couple of years now. Um, and I think it's really good news. You know, it's really good news over the next uh, couple of months. You have another big project come to your come to the county, um, and I think there's going to be quite a bit of action uh, over the next few months. You know, as we kind of gear up towards construction, and you know, um, you know, I think there's going to be quite a bit of activity, which is uh, which is great. <laughs> so, uh, we'll kind of definitely keep everyone posted, and uh, just appreciate your guys' support as we've been uh, working through this. Well, thank you, Will. It's great to hear that you're uh, you're moving forward with your next phase. So good luck with that, and uh, we'll probably be seeing you again. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, bye. Okay, that completes item nine three. So we can go to Matt's item next, I believe, the restricted surplus. Matt is there. Super. So we're on item 11 2. Welcome, Matt. All right. This is a, you, you might think this is a, a broken record. We do this every year and I think for, for good reason, it's a, a good time to uh, check in on our restricted surplus funds. Um, so what I have here is uh, pre preliminary estimates. We're still waiting on some final invoicing to come from the city to process, but we're, we're pretty close to uh, closing out our 2020 year end. Um, so, what I'm requesting here is a, a transfer of some of our unrestricted net assets into restricted surplus funds. So 
around $9.2 million into restricted surplus. And I've proposed that we sock that away into our infrastructure fund and uh, top our stabilization fund back up to the 5 million that it was at before we uh, provided that 8% discount on taxes in 2020. Um, I've summarized, included a, uh, a chart there for council to see where uh, the activity has been in the various reserves over the year and where we'll kind of shake out uh, more or less after we make these allocations uh, as part of the year end process. Um, highlighted some of the, the big differences between what we had budgeted. So we, we came into 2020 with uh, an expectation that we would draw down our reserves by just about $7.4 million. Uh, actual net transfers uh, as of December 31st were 6.3 drawn from reserves. After we put this 9 million back in, we'll have a net transfer to uh, restricted surplus of just over 2.8 million. Uh, the big, big differences there between what we budgeted and what actually happened, our capital projects and partnerships uh, were underspent by 5 million, gravel crush projects underspent by just about 1.85. We did uh, pretty good on our investments. Investment income came in $1.8 million higher. I think we were around that 5.5% uh, return for, for our investments with CIBC. And uh, we did have a little bit of well drilling tax in the first part of the year that uh, came in higher than budgeted. Uh, each year, I like to highlight uh, future projects fund as well as the regional enhancement fund here. So we're carrying forward some balances and we, we should probably look at these as part of our 2021 or 2022 uh, budget process, whether some of these things need to be uh, reallocated other places. So we've got some funds left over from our software integration project some some money left over from the new building project. Gravel pits and landfill reclamation costs, those support the liabilities on our, our financial statements for cleaning up uh, both the gravel pits and uh, landfill. And the lion's share in that future project fund is about $5 million we've allocated to retiring the debt on that project. Uh, when we look at the regional enhancement fund, I really think now that we've got these ICFs in place, we've got these new recreation agreements, it would be nice to see the rest of the funds in that regional enhancement uh, reserve uh, chewed up. Some of them have already been alloc allocated out. So you'll see there the city of Brooks, uh, we've approved 850 for the Hort main line, uh, the JBS daycare 101, um, and there'll be some remaining balances there. So we could have a conversation about whether that remaining balance for uh, the city and town of Asano should just be used to offset some of the costs of the ICFs and REC agreements there. Um, and then the divisional balances, there, there's a little bit for Div 2 uh, from the, the original allocation, which was made way back when, uh, 33, 34,000 for Div 6 and Div 9, 60, 68, $69,000 there. So for, for the divisional counselors, just keep those uh, those dollars in your back pocket. If there's projects in uh, those communities, uh, remember there's some funds there in that regional enhancement fund. We we do have a, uh, a restricted surplus policy. We put this back, we put this in place back in 2012. And the goal was really to, to set us up for financial strength. And I think it, it is doing that. Um, there's some minimum balances that we, we have agreed to maintain. And this chart uh, shows where we're at. We are in compliance with the policy. I compare our closing balances and our uh, capital funds, so vehicles, machinery, and equipment, facilities, and infrastructure to what we've amortized to date you'll see we've got 116% uh, socked away on vehicles, machinery, and equipment, 87% of accumulated amortization on facilities, and 63% on infrastructure. Uh, that infrastructure number after we do this transfer will increase to about 71%. So we're starting to fill that uh, infrastructure deficit gap. 
with uh, with savings there. So that that's a positive story for us. Um, I'll get off my uh, my soapbox. That's kind of my summary, and I'm I'm open for for questions. Questions. No questions. I have to adjust my glasses to make sure that I'm seeing this. Huey. Thanks, Molly. So, Matt, lately we've been talking about uh, these rec facilities here in Tilly, which are plants, ice plants are going to falling apart. And they need to be rebuilt, and they're they're getting dangerous. As we remember the uh, the ammonia problem in. Uh, Fernie, 2017, and three people passed away from that. So they're they're concerned about those things. So I wondered, with this uh, restricted surplus for recreation, could we be able to delve into that fund to help build those facilities, help rebuild them? So the recreation fund has been accumulating uh, dollars over the last number of years. The the balance at the end of December um, will have a little bit come out for for the city of Brooks uh, yet, but you're around five million dollars in that recreation fund. So you know that's that's what those funds were intended for is capital build in in the communities as uh, council considers appropriate. There, um, Lane had be, began a a public engagement, which has kind of stalled out with the uh, the pandemic, to uh, to meet with community groups to kind of develop a framework for how those funds would be uh, allocated and prioritized. So I'm not sure if Lane has anything to to speak to on on that front, but but certainly that fund was was established for uh, support in the communities. Thanks, Matt. Lane, did you have anything else to offer there? Yes, we had uh, the first session of what was anticipated to be four sessions back in mid-October, and we haven't had an opportunity to meet since. The, the whole purpose in going through that process was to gather feedback from the community groups as to how those recreation facility improvement reserve funds could be allocated in the future and on what basis they should be allocated. So the plan is to gather that feedback and come up with a, a model that council could consider for how that, that fund would be managed going forward. But we certainly don't have those answers at this point in time. We will be in a position to resume those meetings just as soon as uh, this the restrictions have been relaxed to the point where we can start meeting again in person. I think everyone's aware of that process and that it sort of hasn't uh, gone along the way that we expected it to, but uh, I think uh, our communities need to realize that it's not just going to be a as far as I'm concerned, anyhow, just give us the money and we'll get on with replacing all this stuff. Um, the communities have to be very involved in fundraising and getting organized, I believe, as well. Because the isn't there a thing about the, you know, building buildings is easy, but it's the, the going forward with them for the rest of their lives that is pretty costly as well. So Hubie, I know you've asked this question before. So, I mean, is that, are those topics of conversation with your uh, rec groups? I'm sure they yeah. are. Actually last night, um, they've come up with a proposal and uh, they've contacted contractors and got bids and uh, they will be forwarding a letter from the rec board to council. And I think it'll be on the table by the 25th, February 25th. Along with the understanding of what their responsibilities would have to be, I'm yep. assuming. That was discussed last night too, yeah. 
Um, I think going forward, that's going to be the biggest, uh, the biggest challenge of all is for the communities to realize their, their part in all this. Brian? Yep. Well, thank you, Molly, and uh, and good for you to bring it up, Hubie. But I guess, you know, it's a little premature. It'll probably be on the next council meeting. But in, in Duchess, we've, um, the, the hall upgrades are being looked at seriously. But the funding model that that we've pushed both from the village and the, and uh, Anne-Marie and myself is that the Ag Society or the, the groups that are using it are gonna pay for about a third. Um, and then the village is gonna pay a third and the county would pay a third of that capital if it's if it's approved, that's the proposal going through, but there is no, there is no proposal that would be even considered if the groups using it wouldn't be at the table with money. It's just, it wouldn't even, we wouldn't have even opened the discussion. So there has to be a significant portion from the, the groups that are in those communities that are gonna be willing to step forward and say, uh, we'll put our money where our mouth is. Can you help us out? Thanks, Brian. Clarence? And um, just to staff, if we're gonna be discussing this next meeting, can we have a, uh... We've had it before in a, in a list of contributions uh, from the county over the years, because I'm, I'm not sure that we've been paying a third anywhere before, unless I mean, I'm, I'm totally mistaken. I'd just like to know, I think we have to look what we've done in the past and are we gonna change policy with or change our habits or not? Uh, I think it's, we should, uh, have a good discussion on that. Other comments or can we move to a motion? Brian? I th didn't you be make the motion? I might be wrong, oh. but I, th I thought I heard it. Well, I, I would be happy to make the motion for, for maps uh, as recommended that we, the year-end transfer of unrestricted net assets to restricted surplus funds as proposed by finance be approved. And it's wonderful when there are transfers available to be made. We'll give you all the credit for that, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All in Thank favor you. of the motion? <laughs> Opposed? The motion is carried. Is that Great, thank everybody? you everybody. That's it for you, Matt? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, we'll carry on to item 11.3, which is a resolution in support of uh, FCM Asset Management Program grants. Um, give me a chance to get there. So I know I saw Morgan's name on this earlier. Morgan, is Morgan back to speak to this? Yeah, Hi there. She's you're, you're in a different spot. <laughs> I'm looking down here. Morgan, welcome back. <laughs> Okay, item 11.3 is where we're at, and I found it, and I found Morgan too, so we'll let you uh, take it away, Morgan. Awesome. Uh, so I'm just back looking for a resolution in support of applying for funding through the Municipal Asset Management Program offered through FCM. So as part of their application process, it's required that a separate council resolution be made indicating support of the project. So we're applying to receive $50,000, which is the maximum amount a municipality is allowed to apply for. Um, and it's gonna be used for a road condition study scheduled to take place this year. Uh, currently, council has the project approved in the 2021 interim budget with the total amount budgeted, budgeted of 150,000. Good, well, it'd be great to get some money from FCM. Kelly. Motion to approve as recommended. 
Okay, option one, any other questions? All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you, Morgan. Before I send you away, is there anything else? I don't think so. <laughs> On the agenda. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye. Okay, item 11-4, uh, Lane, most. This item is back before council. Hmm. Oh. Lane, I can't oh, hear there you. There we, go. There, there we are now. Sorry. Okay. So this item is back before council. It relates to the municipal operating support transfer grant that the government of Alberta provided to all municipalities. It is a per capita grant. The allocation that the county received is $766,000. There's a range of uses that those funds can be put towards. Um, conversation in the past has been about the possibility of making some of these funds available to recreation groups to offset either revenue losses that those groups have incurred or additional costs that they have also incurred in relation to the pandemic. Another use that municipalities can apply these funds for is to offset outstanding 2020 tax receivables. And I guess the question is, what use does council want us to allocate these funds to initially? The quickest and simplest thing to do would be to allocate them to the county's 2020 receivables, but recognize also that there is needs that a number of groups within the county has to offset the impact that COVID has had on their operations. And if the funds are going to be used to cover off outstanding tax receivables, then hopefully there's going to be some other avenue that could be considered in the near future to provide funds for these recreation groups. So that's really a summary of the issue for council to consider. Um, it would be okay to make a motion to approve with allocating it to the tax receivables. But at the same time, we would also suggest that consideration needs to be given at some point to helping these groups out in offsetting the impact of COVID on their operations. If there's any questions, we'll attempt to address them for you. Anne-Marie? We've discussed it before, and to me, it makes sense to um, use this uh, program to offset the taxes. I'm wondering if we should um, communicate with all the organizations, or maybe you have done that, to make sure that they keep track of their expenses that are COVID related, and maybe also let them know if they need immediate help because they're in trouble, to let us know, to contact us, and then maybe we can see if we can help them. You're muted, Molly. <laughs> that time of afternoon, eh? Um, are there other questions or other thoughts? So Duchess is the only community that hasn't formalized what they're doing just yet. But the other communities, municipalities have received money recently, so they may or may not be fine for a while. Uh, so Anne-Marie, basically your motion would be to proceed with the uh, using the money to go towards our mm -hmm. taxes. C correct. And you talk about Duchess, but I'm not. I'm talking about our own organizations, our own community halls, and, and maybe as a suggestion, it doesn't have to be part of my motion, but a suggestion to get in touch with our own organizations to see if they need help right away. But, you know, that's to decide. But yes, I'll make a motion that we uh, use the county's most funds towards outstanding 2020 tax receivables. Further discussion? 
Clarence. So what are those numbers? The number of well, if you're, talking, if you're talking 22 tax receivables, are you talking what they paid or what they haven't paid or what should have been paid and hasn't been paid or what are we talking? I'd like to know the numbers. Where that where where what does what does that mean in in dollars and cents across the board? Lane. Yes, it, Matt has confirmed that the total uncollected 2020 levy exceeds what we would be eligible to receive under this program. We can generate uh, an exact amount for you, but it certainly exceeds the $766,000 that the funds would be used for if that's the decision that council wants to make. I would like to know where that is, where that, where that would be going. Just. Okay, we'll we'll provide that information here shortly. Wayne. Also, another thing, they, we're, we have that shortfall this year because certain people haven't paid their taxes. If that is what this is covering, right? Does this get them off the hook? Or are they still? obligated to pay this lane no it, it doesn't get them off the hook it simply um reduces the receivable that the county has on the books we still have an opportunity and full rights to apply the tax recovery processes that are outlined in the legislation so it, it doesn't eliminate the liability that the property owner has. Tracy, Kelly. I'm just wondering, is there a way to um, share these funds? Like, can we take a portion to go to some of these uh, recreation facilities, um, you know, like, but you said if we qualified, we could get 766,000 from most, but um, could we take like 250,000 of that to have available for some of our recreation facilities? You know, lots of places still had um, utility expenses, but could gain no revenue this year. So, you know, could we have sort of some of it go for those sorts of funds? We're free to do whatever we choose, I believe, right, Lane? That's right. As long as it meets the the guidelines of the program, you're at complete liberty to distribute those funds however you see fit, which includes retaining them for the tax receivables. Kelly? So we talked about this last month at council where we wrote off 1.2 million of tax receivable that's not no longer um, uh, on our books. And so because of the short turnaround and reporting period on these most dollars, we suggested or we kind of came to consensus that this seven hundred and odd dollars, thousand dollars would um, would be a good way to to get that job done, with the understanding and with the agreement that we would revisit this via our recreation dollars and help out those most in need. So I I think we're we're rediscussing something we've already done. That's my thoughts. And that was my understanding because that conversation was uh, sped up by the fact Bizano had involved us in some discussion. But Matt is here and can answer maybe Clarence's question. So to answer Clarence's question, we have $909,471 uh, dollars owing from 2020. We had written off 237,461 
of those dollars as part of our application to the uh, PERC slash DERC program up to the province. Uh, the nice thing about uh, making the decision to apply the most grant funds to the property taxes is it's a, it just is simple administratively. We just report that that's what we've done. We, we don't let anybody off the hook. We can still collect those taxes. When we collect those taxes, we don't have, there's no implications on the grant reporting side of things. So it's a lot more streamlined than, uh, you know, trying to pull all of our, our COVID uh, expenses, which we could also apply to this, uh, our revenue shortfalls. This is a uh, one and done. We know that we've got enough in outstanding taxes and we apply the most to that. It comes into our revenues. And then the, the conversation about rec funding or, or anything else, those funds are in the bank and council can make that, that decision. And it takes the pressure off for uh, having to turn around things by that March 31st deadline. Anne-Marie. On that turnaround date, we discussed the, at the last meeting too, because COVID is not over and those total expenses of the organizations are not in. So this is the easiest way to get our full amount and then we'll use that money later to reimburse people. Lionel? Yeah, I agree with you there, Anne-Marie. Let's, uh, let's just allocate it to... Uh, um, to the unpaid uh, taxes now and, and deal with the recreation at other time. Any further questions, Clarence? So you're saying it's an internal county thing and nothing, nothing outside the, the amounts are still owing to the county? That's correct. Apart from that uh, 237,000 that we had uh, written off earlier in the year. Okay. All right, we have um, a motion on the floor to allocate the most funds to offset uncollected 2020 property tax receivables and defer a decision to allocate other reserve funds in the near future to groups throughout the county after borough thorough determination of need has been obtained. I believe that we can keep that motion in place, which is a first in a long time, and just vote on it. <laughs> so I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Thanks, Lane. Uh, on to a letter from the MD of Bonneville talking about a need for a stronger voice at the table at FCM. And I, you know, I read this and um, I guess they really sort of want us to tell them what we think about FCM. And I'm not sure, I guess, as I say, they, they're hoping that it'll spark a conversation and potential solution to a long-standing issue. Well, this is a very lofty cause, I'm thinking, seeing as <laughs> Western Canada, for the most part, feels that we're totally neglected by the East. So I really don't know how to respond, but I'll ask all you 10 wise people. And I see none of you have any better ideas than I do. So I guess we could just take it as information then, Lionel? That's exactly what I was gonna suggest. Just take it as information. Okay. I see no uh, arguments coming forth to do otherwise. So I'll quickly move on to item the next item which is the rma spring convention and ariana has some 
questions there about meetings. Oh, man. And I just did something that screwed up where everything is. Yeah. Anyhow, I'm winging it until I get back my... Uh, I use my iPad and every now and then I touch things and all of a sudden it's all gone. So, um, Arianna, maybe you can just uh, take a look at what you've got there and I'll get back to my agenda here as quickly as possible. It's uh, it's mostly about the meetings with the ministers. They, they released a draft agenda. There's not much on it right now. I know some of you were waiting to make a decision whether to attend or not, so that's fine. The deadline is March 5th, I believe. Um, so I just, this is the third time this has been brought back, so I kind of summarize the results of the previous meetings. So there's three bullet topics at the top there, which were changes to the assessment model, support for the, so the SEWA project, and then delays associated with obtaining environmental assessments. So those are what I believe you want to meet with ministers on if they're available. I haven't made any attempts yet, but I will start sending out emails. Um, yeah. Is there anything else? Have I got them right, first of all? And do you have any other items that have popped up? Thanks, Ariana. I got my information back also. Um, on the first one, the assessment model, I did speak to Dan Hamilton and they have not uh, done anything else in a, but are quite uh, willing to join us if we have set up a meeting. They're quite willing to in, in be involved to talk to the minister. His feeling or their council feeling is that Rick McIver will be replaced. I I don't know um, when that could happen. Cypress also thinks that they'll, this uh, government may not be that interested in talking to municipalities in a serious way and knowing that there's an election in the fall as well. But Cypress is, is willing to uh, stay involved with us in any way that they can be helpful and the idea of keeping it the assessment model review and um, because some of us are going to be on it might be even more important to continue to hammer at municipal affairs. And once if Rick McIver is replaced we'd have our, uh, I mean, there'd be notes and stuff from a way back or to carry on forward if we want to try and have a meeting, which doesn't really have to tie in with RMA, but we can wait and see if in fact they're going to have some meetings or meeting times. What are your thoughts? We'll do it one by one. Assessment model. I think in the past we've thought it's pretty important. Clarence? Well, I, I definitely, I mean, that's our lifeblood. Um, and, uh, and I don't, you know, we probably need Kevin or Matt to talk to it or somebody else who gets really grilled and, and prepared to talk to it. But I think uh, our staff is probably best to, to talk to that particular issue. But I do believe that it's important enough that we should never let it go. Yes, I, I agree too. Kelly? We had talked about sending a letter ahead of time, um, and kind of a preamble to the minister so that um, the uh, discussion could be started ahead of time. And uh, I, I think that's a very good way to start. 
So forwarding a letter to Hurt McIver to uh, lay out our concerns and that how we would like to meet with him to talk about them. And at one point we even talked about it being specific to our county um, so that we can use our facts and figures as how it uh, pertains to us specifically rather than doing the joint um, municipality discussion we had talked about doing it uh, specific to us and how different scenarios were going to work for work on our taxpayers here yeah and and Ariane has got that laid out in in this information as well for us um, and our assessor has been looking at at uh, other provinces is there any update on that Kevin if so Matt and I had met with uh, Kevin last week and uh, He's in the middle of finalizing our assessment role, which has to be done at the end of February. So we told him to hold off any more work until he gets that completed. So he has, uh, he has a, a, bu a bunch of it done. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, he's focused uh, on the oil and we had asked him to focus on the gas as well because gas is a bigger component uh, in the county and it's not big in Saskatchewan, but uh, so he was going to reach out to his contacts from SAMA and see if he can get some details on that. Um, I told him that we weren't pressing for that information because of the province laying uh, the three-year window out, uh, but obviously it won't be probably ready for when you meet with the minister, if you do. Um, but again, we, ha we have to advocate for uh, fair assessments and knowing what assessments are, and we have to advocate for if uh, taxation is a problem, and they need to address mill rates. So uh, they can't pull everybody into that same boat. Uh, we've talked about that many times, but those are the two, the two big things I think that uh, need to be hammered home every time that, uh, that we meet. And the other thing that, need, that has to be hammered home is that uh, these industries cause municipalities like ours uh, big expenses every year. And for them to, uh, not be paying appropriate taxes with reasonable mill rates is, is something that's not fair and they need to hear that as well. Can't hear you. I think those uh, three items alone are enough for a preliminary agenda to uh, be sent ahead, um, should we be uh, waiting till we get more from Kevin in March? Kevin? I don't, I don't think for that letter that you need to. I mean, that what he's going to try to determine is the assessments the way they stand, but the statement still can remain that, yeah. you know, we appreciate the, the uh, Premier's comments that, you know, assessments are fair, but, uh, and they, they need to be, it just needs to be validated. And we had suggested originally that it should have been done at the provincial level, or it should have been done at the RMA level, or somewhere, somebody should have done this legwork already. Because to cherry pick a property here and there and say assessments aren't fair, that's, that's not the right way of going about it. They're very complex and, and they need to be care, com compared across the board. So. I think those three statements are safe to put in a letter for sure and then keep the conversation going. Do you know what the RMA is up to with like are they they're working on a proposal? I'm not sure the uh, RMA is working on it but again they they kind of sit in the middle of the road they represent all municipalities and and they I don't think they have a keen interest like we do to make sure that uh, Everything that's on the table is accurate, it's open and it's detailed uh, and it's not cherry picked politically or any other way. Okay. All right, well, I think strong direction for a letter for a start and Kevin has just outlined the, the three topics and um, 
if we get that to Rick McIver, that'll probably signal that there'll be a change in the minister the next day, but at least we can uh, start the process and, and continue working on it and continue to add to it as we gather information from Kevin Halstead or as other um, municipalities come up with, with more information. So um, Kevin, is that a letter that Matt could put together or you could put together? It's certainly put together the letter, uh, but it, it definitely should come from your signature if it's going to the minister, I think. Yes, absolutely. I can do that much. So we'll work on that for a start. And um, so then the other one was Sewa. And what minister is is that? Is that municipal again or Lionel who? I know you said that you'd been, uh, your group had been working or lobbying? Yes, they have been. And I don't know, I, I don't remember which uh, minister they talked to, but they've been there a number of times. Um, this is a continuing saga. And uh, um, I'm maybe even, they may even be tired of seeing anybody in Edmonton by now, I'm not sure. Ryan? Well, I, I mean, I don't, I don't sit in your seat, Lionel, but I'm thinking this is environment um, when it comes down to it. There might be more than one department that could very well be, but I think you need to start with environment because if they don't, if they don't, if they're not behind it, it's not going to happen. So that would tie in with uh, environmental assessments and approvals in the next one too. We could put the two together and try to have an envir environment meeting? I think it's important to do that because, you know, they don't usually want to meet with us if we got one item. And uh, if we've got two items, I think that gives us a little bit more chance to have a, have a, have a, a chance that a, the that a ministry is going to give us the time. And I want to reinforce that, you know, this doesn't have to be during convention. No. Like for Pete's sake, we can we can do this anytime with that the fact of the matter is it's gonna be virtual anyways. So, you know, if they're if they can make themselves available at another time, you know, I mean if it's during convention because that's their time frame, well that's great. But if it isn't, let's just do it anyways. Yeah, okay. And Ariana, you don't have dates yet for meetings if they're gonna do any during RMA. No, I haven't heard anything yet, but I'll start We'll get the letter for the Minister of Municipal Affairs and I'll reach out to environment and see if they're available. And yeah, that's good. All right. So that topic is covered off for, for this time. Um, checks for payment. We do have a couple of checks for payment. Or I guess it's one check for, uh, must be some ICF or recreation money moving around. So can we get a approval for this? Lionel will move. All in favor? Opposed? Ellen, are you there or did you get lost? Did your computer fail you? Here, I just had to use the bathroom. Okay, we just had a vote. I just noticed that you weren't. Okay, good. Um, checks for payment then, that is approved. Oh, Lionel move that motion. Payment register, questions or a motion to accept. Anne-Marie. Motion to accept. Motion to accept, Anne-Marie. Seeing no other hands, all in favor? Opposed, motion is carried. 
We've covered the municipal services business and takes us to 12.3 tender award. And uh, I see Jeff is with us. Great. Hi, Jeff. Welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, in, in your package, you'll see an RFD for a tender award for the One Tree Road uh, asphalt overlay project. Uh, 2020 budget, we uh, did a preliminary engineering study on the road to identify an appropriate means of um, remediation on that paved surface uh, in an effort to extend its useful life. Um, we went through that process and, and uh, did the design and tender closed on January 28th. Uh, we received four bids for that tender, um, with the low bid coming from Brooks Asphalt and Aggregate. Uh, the engineer's estimate was just under 2.4 million and, and uh, the contract came in at just over 2.1. So uh, we did see uh, some savings there. Um, we did include funding in the 2021 budget to see this project completed uh, as well. We submitted a funding application through the STIP local road program um, and uh, hopefully we hear back from that in the near future and that could see up to a 50% funding coming through that program. So that uh, that would be great if we get uh, awarded that. Um, I think that's all. Uh, looking for a motion to award the tender. Lionel? I would very much like to make that motion. We have a local contractor that's, that's uh, acquired the bid on this. And I think that's really good that we use in local, uh, local help. So I will make that motion. Thanks, Lionel. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? That motion is carried. Your mic is off, Molly. <laughs> That's all for you, Jeff, for now. That's all I've got for today. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, moving on to the first post agenda item. Uh, it's fairly self explanatory. I said I had received a phone call from Jason Hale, who is chair of the ID board, of course, and um, he asked about this and I said, well, from a economic development perspective, it's a good thing in my mind, but that is not for, that's my opinion. And so I invited him to send a letter which would make more sense than just talking to me. So here it is. And any comments? Kelly. Just a question. Can somebody tell me why somebody might think this is a bad idea? Yeah? Okay, I want to hear that. Anne-Marie. Um, the EID is doing a plebiscite to get opinions from their ratepayer, and I don't think as a council that we are in a position to have an opinion on that, and we shouldn't have an opinion. You, you can go to the plebiscite if you're an irrigator and, and vote, but I don't think it should come from us as council. Thanks, Ariana, or Anne-Marie, I should say. Hubie, Lionel. I agree with Anne-Marie. I don't think we should be writing layers of support for this. It's up to the, the EID directors and their rate payers there, their, their water users. Lionel and Clarence. I would just concur with my other two counselors that I don't quite understand why we're even approached on this. This is EID business and and they should be dealing with their ratepayers on it. And it's it's a plebiscite to go ahead with the with their with their changes. And I don't know why we would be involved. 
Thanks. Lionel Clarence. I think we can precede that saying that we're in favor of the project, but that it's being voted for by the district's members. Understand that. But as far as the county is concerned, anything that increases economic activity in this in this region, uh, we support. And if this does that, we certainly will be in full support of that. So we let them make the decision, but we, we definitely are in favor of an additional econ economic activity. We we're not judging whether it will or will not, but. Uh, that's what it is and if that's why they're doing it that's great people are worried that it's being sold too cheaply or if there's not going to be enough water that's not our business to decide other comments Anne Marie um I, I think we should be really neutral, Clarence. Let's not even talk about economic development. Let's just not get involved in this at all. They have a plebiscite, which means getting an opinion from their ratepayers. And if their ratepayers see an economic development part of it, then it's their voice. We, we need to stay out of it. We need to be as neutral as we can on this one. Wayne? I agree with that, Marie. Uh, this is strictly an EID uh, program and they should be handling it and their rate, their water users will make a decision on this and uh, we see it as neutral as possible. I agree with you 100%, Anne Marie. Brian? Let's accept this as information. Or do you need something more official than that? No, I I think that would be. Um, but I don't know if we those are even motions when we accept something for information. We had one earlier that uh, from FCM. So, any other comments? Otherwise, we will look as so we'll accept this for information. All right, we will move on to a letter from the County of Stetler about uncollectible property taxes. And again, this was for information, I believe. They're not asking us to do anything, it's just a fact that we all know we would be in the same shape as this or in the same situation, would we not, Kevin or Matt, anyone who's listening? We would have had to submit lots of money as well to our foundation that hasn't been collected. Kevin? Matt's there or not, but yeah, most definitely we have to pay those requisitions regardless. Any idea, Matt, on how much that might be? I'm not off the top of my head, but I, I could uh, could get that. No, it's it's not necessary. Um, the county of Stetler is quite uh, vocal on lots of things, and so yes, again, another another letter for for our information, I believe. And item 14.2, the Latham, Latham consultation and the solar project. And I'm thinking that this is just also an update, unless there's something else in it. Kelly? Um, just to let you know that this, this went out to all the neighboring ratepayers and um, I have had conversations with um, a couple of farmers in the area. Um, it's the location, if you haven't looked it up, is uh, right around the trap uh, grain or um, 
Quonsets along the number one on the north side of the highway there. Um, and uh, there's a public consultation online this Wednesday at 6 p.m. And we just got an email this morning about that. So if you have the time, come online and check that out. Thanks, Kelly. Your what, reference uh, to the top sound is pretty funny. <laughs> it must, it dates you. It does, <laughs> real yeah. Wayne? What time was that again? Um, your email will point it out. I think it's six o'clock, but you have to register ahead. They didn't give us a link to just pop into. So you have to email them or um, uh, you have to register ahead and then you'll get the link. Molly, you're muted. That was a recent email. Yeah, yeah, it just okay. came out this morning. Good. All right. Um, mini bus monthly report, events submission. I have a couple of questions. Molly, I think Lionel had his hand up on that last. Day. Oh, I'm sorry. I think Brian, you had your hand up at one time too. Todd said I ignored you. So why don't we start with you? Well, I actually wanted the information that Matt was uh, asked uh, as far as the the requisition and the that we had to submit on behalf of Unco that for the buildings that are are uh, the amount that are that he was asked for that in regards to the letter from um, uh, County of Stepper. It's just a, one of those numbers I'd like to sort of have in the back of my mind and. I know he hey. can probably pull that pretty quick. So if he can provide that, if nobody else wants it, that's fine. Just have him send it to me. And I don't know if Matt's still online to hear you, but I'm sure, yes, he is. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> He's on it <laughs> or will be. And Lionel, thanks, Brian, for your patience. Next to Lionel. It wasn't important. It was just about this uh, Bizano Solar. And it was kind of interesting that the panels will generate generate from both the front and the back, which is something different that I hadn't heard of before. I agree, yes. And the, even the talk about the reflection of the snow onto the panels and yeah, interesting. Who knows, someday it just might be more than we think it is. <laughs> um, Oh yes, a couple of, just a couple of quick questions that I've been meaning to ask. Margaret Plumtree, who is looking after the Chamber of Commerce these days, asked me one in an email why we didn't have um, a county rep on the Chamber board. And my answer to her was that we did at one time, and but I would ask um, council because it was never me, and I said, I thought that it might have changed when we changed regional economic development from Nuridi when the, our manager for that department sat on the chamber board. And now that we're bro with Brooks, then there's people from that group sitting on their board. So would that be accurate in people's memory of how that went on? Plus we had the, uh, the desire and the feeling that chamber chamber of commerce should be county business people as opposed to politicians as well. Anne Marie, I know you've been involved in that, so I'll start and with you. For me, yeah, I've, I've been on there for years, and it's exactly like you said. We started the economic development part. Uh, Michelle was involved with the chamber. There, there was no need for for me to be there. It needed to be business driven. And that's why we stopped going. Good. Um, also, just a little bit of bookkeeping before I forget, and, and so that we all have the same uh, times from our interviews this last few nights. Um, I had that our uh, first meeting was 
1 to 2.20, and then the rest of the times just as planned, right? 6 to 8, 6.30 to 7.30. Six to seven, basically. We'll just go with that. Yes. Um, the we'll one on the one on February 9th was six thirty to eight forty-five. Okay. Okay. So you have one to two twenty-one. That was where we did our prep work. Then uh, six to seven fifty-seven. The next evening was four. Oh no, that's me. Six thirty to eight forty-five. Okay. And the last one, six to six fifty. Perfect. Thank you. All right. We'll move into camera with a motion, please. Ellen moves us in. All in favor? Opposed, motion is carried. All right, need a motion? I'll make that motion. Hubie's moving out of, out of camera at whatever time it is, 4.35ish. All in favor? Opposed, motion is carried. So we're out of camera. Need a motion to, oh, I can't even say it, <laughs> accept the resignation of our CAO, Lionel. Under extreme protest, I will accept Kevin's resignation and thank him for his years of, of uh, involvement at the same time. Thank you, Lionel. Let's try try to do this. All uh, mics open. <laughs> yeah. This does not mean that we're happy. <laughs> Just that that's we're doing. It. Yes, that's right. All in favor? Opposed? The motion is carried. <laughs> and our next, um, well, that's it. We don't need another another motion. We're just proceeding. And so it would be to adjourn the meeting then, right? Tracy will adjourn the meeting. Okay, we'll, um, we'll exit. <laughs>